Hi guys! Welcome back to my channel. So, um, I'm so excited because this is the first time na lumabas ako sa, um, sa bawat lessons na nire-record ko. So, just for a change. Let's see if mas magiging okay ba at mas maiintindihan. So, um, uh, lagay nyo lang sa comment section kung mas okay ba to or gusto nyo yung PowerPoint na lang yung papakita ko. So, yun. So, for today, um, uh, I will be discussing the lesson 5 in systems thinking. So, the, our lesson 4 is about complexity in decision making. So, I will provide the link on the description. So, para mapanood nyo rin muna yun. So, for today, we will discuss the learning organization. So, yun. So, I have several questions here para medyo maging podcast type siya. So, I hope you enjoy at marami kayong matutunan. So, yun. So, um, here we will also discuss the disciplines of the learning organization and the laws of the fifth discipline. So, we'll see what is that fifth discipline. So, first, um, I want to quote this um, from Ari Degu. Sorry, meron lang ako dito ang script. Ayan, Ari Degu the head for, he is a head, or he was the head for Royal Dutch or Shell. So, yung gasoline station. So, yun. So, he said that the ability to learn faster than your competitors may be the only sustainable competitive advantage. So, again, I will repeat that. The ability to learn faster than your competitors may be the only sustainable competitive advantage. So, um... Kung natutunan nyo na before, di ba, um, may mga nagsasabi na ang competitive advantage ng isang company ay yung product niya, ang competitive advantage ng isang company ay yung management, maybe that is true. Pero, one thing, according to Ari Degu, um, na isang sustainable, ibig sabihin, it, uh, parang kaya nito na i-maintain yung position ng company mo, kung number one man yan, or whatever, kung anong number ka man. So, yun, so, is your ability to learn faster than your competitors. So, let's try to look back to some companies na um, halimbawa na nasa sige gumawa na lang tayo ng um, hypothetical na company. For example, yung isang company na to is yun nga, number one naman siya. Tapos, marami siyang um, kumaga parang nag-trend yung product or binibili talaga yung mga products and service na pinoprovide nila. Kaso lang, um, so, syempre, merong mga number to sa kanila, merong mga yung mga sumusunod sa kanila, parang um, maybe ngayon sila yung number one, pero after ilang years, possible na kung hindi nila, kung hindi sila matututo or hindi sila magpapatuloy sa learning na meron sila, pwede silang mahuli na. So, yun. so if you know some companies, diba, there are some companies na parang, naging stagnant na lang yung learning nila they didn't um hindi nila ininvent or in innovate yung products and services na meron sila thus naunahan na tuloy sila ng competitors nila so maybe Ari Degu is right so if you have your um uh, comment or your opinion about that so i would love to hear that from the comment section so yun so sabi din sa Fortune magazine forget your tired old ideas about leadership Okay, sabi dun, forget your tired old ideas about leadership. The most successful corporation of the 1990s will be something called a learning organization. So, that is why we will be discussing a learning or the learning organization ngayon, di ba? Um, uh, yung learning organization kasi is not just having one person na siya yung natututo for the organization. Hindi na kasi applicable ngayon yun sa management. Mas maganda or mas applicable ngayon sa management that... Um, uh, lahat kayo from the from the executives hanggang pababa ay natututo. So yun. So and mas ano um kumbaga hindi although medyo ano pa rin naman may mga gumagawa pa rin naman ngayon pero mas ano na siya mas progressive at mas growing your organization na um kahit yung mga staff, kahit yung mga nasa nasa pinakailalim na staff ay nag-undergo ng training at patuloy na natututo. At hindi lang um, sumusunod sa utos, pero naglo-learn din sila. So, yun. So, next is, let's define ano naman, ma'am, yung learning organization. So, learning organization discovers how to tap people's commitment and capacity to learn at all levels in an organization. So, they said that these are the organizations that will excel primarily in the future, or lalo na ngayon. So, yun. So, um, the uh, learning organization also means um, parang ito yung organization that you know how to um, 
alam mo kung paano makuha or madiscover yung potential ng bawat isa. So, yun. So, and sabi ko nga kanina, we're done with those um, traditional business uh, ideas or system na um, papasunurin mo lang yung mga tao mo. So, yun. Mas maganda din na um, syempre, susunod din naman sila sa'yo, pero they are learning or nadidiscover din nila kung paano gawin yung particular na bagay na ito. So, yun. So, I have a question, another question here. Ayan. Are learning organizations possible? So, how about you? What's your idea about that? Do you think learning organizations are possible right now? Ayan. So, for me, ayan, this is my answer. For me, it's really possible. Why? Kasi, lalo na ngayon, di ba, nasa information technology na tayo, and lahat ay accessible over the internet. So, it is really impossible na hindi magkaroon ng learning organization. Kahit nga yung iba, um, halimbawa sa isang company, kahit nga hindi provide ng company yung mismong training for this particular skill, ako as an employee, dahil gusto kong matutunan yun, I can, I can learn that over the internet and I can register myself. So, I think with that, dahil nga sobrang accessible na ng, accessible na ng information sa atin, learning organization is still possible and not because um uh, hindi rin dahil um hindi lang dahil doon but i think every one of us wants to learn diba di, lahat naman tayo diba we want to learn something new i hope this pandemic um may mga natutunan tayong mga bagong skills ayan kung natuto kang magluto magbake ganyan so diba we love to learn and by watching everything mga tutorial sa youtube matututo ka na diba so yun so i guess um, dahil nature natin na gusto natin ng natututo at nag, um, nag-grow yung kaalaman na meron tayo, most probably yes, so learning organization is possible. So now um, let's proceed to the disciplines of the learning organization but before that let's um, differentiate what invention and innovation is. So oh, no, medyo alam nyo naman na to but let's see ayan, so um, ano bang difference nila? So yun, so invention is um, creation and introduction of a product or process for the first time. So, yun. So, for example, when um, Agapito Flores um, invented the fluorescent lamp, diba? So, wala pa tayong, ano nun eh, wala pa tayong fluorescent lamp talaga. Si Thomas Edison, diba? When he first invented the light bulb, wala pa talaga tayong ilaw nun. So, yun. So, imagine that, ang tawag yun, invention. So, for example, si Wilbur and Orville Wright, when they invented the airplane, ayan, hindi pa talaga tayo nakakalipad noon. Parang yung, um, yung paglipad noon ay impossible pa at hindi pa, hindi pa kayang ma-touch ng isip ng mga tao. So, yun. So, um, that is, or, dahil, um, that is something new. So, we can call that as invention. Whereas, innovation is, if you improve someone else's invention, or you make significant contribution of that, uh, of the, an existing product. For example, uh, wala pa yata nito, but I don't know kung meron na or wala. Pero, naalala ko, when I was studying sa um as uh, business administration one of my classmates um siguro wala pa nito ngayon or kung wala pa baka pwede niyo ma ano siya ma put into um into existence so yun so meron di ba meron tayong straw so mayroong plastic straw mayroong bamboo straw mayroong stainless na straw para sa mga nature lover natin diyan ang naisip niya is edible na straw O, diba? Tapos yung edible na straw na yun, may flavor pa. So, for example, astro siya na ang flavor ay orange. So, habang umiinom ka ng tubig mo, may lalalasan kang orange. So, ba There is a straw naman na, pero, halimbawa, na materialize yun, no? You made it something, um, co- a great contribution to that product. In, sa simpleng straw lang, gumawa ka ng, or nag, ano ka, nag-innovate ka. So, yun, so that's innovation. So, um, in invention, you create something new. In um, innovation, it says that it creates something that sells. Ma'am, ano yun, di ba? Parang, um, i- yung invention ba, it could be possible na hindi pa ito mabebenta. Ayan, so, somehow, okay, um, um, this is one of the best examples. So, sabi ko nga kanina, si Wilbur and Orville Wright, noong 1903, they, um, uh, they, parang, they proved na yung powered flight ay possible. 
Okay, or we can fly, di ba? Ngayon, uh, ang, it says na ang airplane, ang first airplane ay nag, yung nag, ano siya, it served the public in um, 19, sorry, mayroon akong script, 1935. So, imagine that. So, from 1903, to 1935, ibig sabihin 1903 na discovered, tapos 1935 lang siya, nakapag-serve into public, ibig sabihin it underwent, yung invention na yun, it underwent different innovation para mas maging safe para mas maging um, accessible or mas, uh, mas kumbaga parang mas maging possible na maibenta ito at tangkilikin ng public so yun, so that's an example of an invention na nag-undergo into different innovation. So, if you know pa, mayroon pa kayong alam na mga um, innovation na nag, uh, parang nag-undergo ng different, um, sorry, invention na nag-undergo ng different innovation, you can share it down in the comment section. I would love to learn from you also. So, yun. So, that's the difference of invention and innovation. So, um, it says also that, balik tayo sa learning organization. Sabi kasi, learning organizations have been invented. ba? Siguro, before, na, naririnig na natin yung about the learning organization. But, they have not yet been innovated. Imagine, na-invento lang, pero hindi pa siya na-innovate. Ibig sabihin, there is, siguro parang, when, we, when you invent that, parang yung prototype, so yun, so medyo madami pa siyang kailangan i-improve so, um, you better halimbawa yung mga may, pin, may pinrototype ka na application o kaya website, mas maganda ipatry mo muna into different um, people, ayan um, kung ilan man yan tapos, um, get their opinion so yun, so it's the same with the learning organization, siguro parang naimbento lang ito, pero hindi pa rin talaga ito na innovate or um, pwedeng marinig, mabasa natin from different textbooks pero hindi pa rin natin siya um, na-apply thus, hindi tayo nagbe-benefit from the learning organization so, we will be having a short break and so before I continue with our discussion uh, please don't forget to like, subscribe, and share this video on your friends and your classmates especially dun sa mga um, uh, they want to have their or they are um, having or handling an organization or they are studying business management. So, so this is really helpful for them. So, yun. so um, uh, now let's proceed with the uh, five new component technologies or these are the um, five disciplines of the learning organization. So we have first is ayan, personal mastery. So, mom, what is a personal mastery? So, it is a discipline of continually clarifying and deepening your personal vision. Okay, so it is, um, yes, may company vision, so you have your own personal vision, pero hindi lang siya natatapos doon. So, yun, so you, um, you clarify it and then pinapalalim mo pa yung sarili mong vision, focusing your energ energies of, um, of um, parang you deepen or you focus your energies sa kung ano yung dapat mong i-master, develop patience, and of seeing reality objectively. So, when we say mastery, it is a special level of proficiency. So, um, are you parang magaling ka dito sa particular na bagay na to. And you consistently get results that matter most deeply to you. So, that's mastery. So, ang discipline ng personal mastery is to clarify the things that matters to you right so yun so you have to know ano ba talaga yung what really matters pwede kasi ako for example i've i've been in that situation na i felt i am a jack of all trades ikaw rin ba ganun din ba so yun so i i felt that and then or and um na torn na ako kasi apakadami ko nang gustong gawin at napakarami ko ng skill na na-develop to the point na hindi ko na alam ko ano na yung gusto kong gawin. So, yun. So, when, when you, um, in a learning organization, you must have the discipline of personal mastery. Ibig sabihin, alam mo sa sarili mo what matters to you as a person, as a worker in that company. And, you are not just working for money, but you live your lives in your highest aspirations or yung passion mo talaga na ginagawa mo. 
So yon. So if that is you, wow, I want to congratulate you, de ba? Na you're doing um your job not just for money. I I would really love to do that, de ba? Pero sure, sure, money matters naman talaga. Pero alam mo yon, parang parang secondary na lang. Pero dahil nga you have your personal mastery, you continually parang na dinidepend mo yung vision mo. Thus, kapag medyo nahirapan ka na, hindi ka agad-agad mag-give up. So, yun. So, why? Kasi, you have that um, personal mastery in yourself. Ibig sabihin, you know what really matters to you. Alright? So, yun. So, that's the first discipline in a learning organization. You should have a personal mastery. And, don't forget, if you are the manager of an organization, dapat yung mga um, Uh, yung mga, you teach your people na magkaroon din sila ng personal mastery. Next, and the second discipline is the discipline of mental models. Okay. Ayan, ano naman yung mental models na yan? These are deeply ingrained assumptions. So, yung nakaprogram sa utak mo, generalizations or even pictures or images that influence how we understand the world and how we take action. So I forgot um I think in my lesson in uh intrinsic program. So um hanapin niyo na lang na natakal ko na yon before yung mga programming sa mind natin ever since we were young. It affects how we decide and it affects how we uh, act, how we behave. So yun, so ano yung mga nakaprogram sa mind mo? And very often, hindi tayo aware na yung mga mental models na ito ay nakaka-affect with our behavior. One example ng mental model. Um, for example, nakakita ka ng, ayan, ng may gantong hikaw, char. Ayan. So for example, may nakakita ka na ang ganda-ganda ng suot niya. Naka-coat siya. Um, halimbawa, bata pa lang. So, uh, uh, halimbawa, bata pa lang, tapos nakadangling na yung earrings niya, naka-high heel siya, and mukhang ang social-social niya, tapos ang branded nung bang niya. ba diba? Kapag nakita mo yon parang, wow, rich kid to. ba diba? So, yun, yun agad yun naka yung model or yung naka-mindset sa'yo. So, yun. So, naka-program kasi yun sa mind natin, nakapagka ganun yung suot nila, mayaman. ba diba? So, yun. So, and then, halimbawa naman, um, nakakita ka naman ng ba, sa workmates mo or sa classmates mo, nakakita ka naman ng hindi masyadong magaling pumorma o kaya naman um, uh, yung simple lang siya ganyan, isipin mo agad eh, wala tong pakailam sa iisipin ng iba diba, o kaya yung um, uh, diba, wag gulo-gulo yung buhok niya pag pumapasok, mga ganyan wala tong pakailam sa iniisip nila um uh, pa di, na, di tayo aware that there are some mental models na ganun. So, yun. So, um, why do we tackle about this? Anong, ano niya, anong relate niya in the organization? Um, you have to understand that kung ano yung mental models ng bawat isa, iba-iba tayo ng mental models. Lang kung nasa isang organization ka or nasa isang company ka, kung ano yung mental model mo, it can affect how you um, relate with me. It can affect your relationship with me. So, it is very important na yung mga managers, they know the mental models of their um, of their people na under sa kanila. Um, there are some um, uh, parang intrinsic programs na na, na naka-mindset sa atin, like uh, sa isang lugar. For example, uh, there are some countries na sobrang mapagmahal sila sa mga hayop, ganyan. There are some countries na um, yun, um, family oriented, lalo na tayong mga Filipinos, di ba? So, ibig sabihin, it can affect your behavior. So, um, kapag um, alimbawa may sakit yung anak nitong particular employee na to, you would understand them na kaya sila umabsent, kaya nila nagagawa tong mga gantong bagay, or kaya sila medyo nalilit, kasi lalo na kung mga kakapanganak lang, tapos hindi nila maiwan yung anak nila, or may maliit sila na anak, kasi alam mo na ang Uh, ang mental models natin ay we love our family. Diba? So, yun. so, those are some of the uh, disciplines of the learning organization that we have to know. Number one, our personal mastery. At dapat matrain ang mga tao under you that they should have their personal mastery. At pangalawa, um, you should be aware of their mental models. Kasi kung ano yung mental model niyan, it will affect the uh, how they um uh, how they relate with other people. 
So, yun. So, according to Arindig You Again, so yung sinabi ko kayo na yung planning head ng Royal Dutch and Shell, according to him, continuous growth depends on institutional learning. Okay? Continuous growth ng company, it will depend on the institutional learning or organizational learning, which is a process whereby management teams change their shared mental models of the company, their markets, and their competitors. So, for this reason, we think of planning as learning and of corporate planning as institutional learning. So, according to him, yes, we have, we all have our different mental models, pero if we want to have a learning organization, we should learn from each other's mental models. Yan, matuto ka sa kung ano yung mental model ng iba, kasi baka mami, it, it, makatulong naman talaga ito for the company. Kung hindi, matuto ka rin mag-adjust. Okay, kasi you have to create um the a mental model na uniform within the company. The, para magkaroon ng learning organization. So, yun. And, the, um, ano siya, sobrang, um, maganda to kasi it will uh, give you the chance or opportunity para mapag-usapan or magkaroon ng learning conversations, especially when you have a meeting. So, yun. So, kung maga, parang medyo merong mga magka-clash, ganyan, pero, you, you balance the inquiry and advocacy. So, yun. You balance and you you make it a habit or parang culture ng company that um, pag, yung pagiging open-minded nila we, we can um uh, can affect or can help them also. So, yun. So, that is the um uh, principle or the system of mental models. Okay? Or the discipline of mental models. Number three, ayan. So, we have five disciplines. Okay? Pangatlo na tayo. So, pangatlong um, discipline of the learning organization is building shared vision. Okay, so for a learning organization, it's really good to have one or um, kahit marami kayong vision, pero yung vision nyo ay shared. Yung vision nyo ay hindi lang galing sa isa. It involves the skills of unearthing shared pictures of the future. That's the vision that fosters genuine commitment and enrollment rather than compliance. I don't know kung saan ko ito nasabi na, pero uulitin ko ulit na sa video na ito na hindi na kasi effective ngayon yung, um, ah, sa systems thinking din yon So, hindi na kasi effective ngayon yung, halimbawa, you will si president will create the vision of the company. Oh, ito yung pupuntahan natin. And then, the, yung mga nasa baba niya will just follow. Okay. It's effective, okay, it's somehow more effective yung um, uh, you build your shared vision kasi it encourages commitment rather than magkukomply lang sila kasi iyon yung gusto mo. And one more thing na um, pwedeng maging disadvantage kapag uh, isa lang yung nag-decide for the vision of the company is um, pwede kasing on, para sa personal ano niya lang yun, sa personal benefit niya lang yun. So, yun. So, better, ayan, mag-share-share sila, um, uh, i-share nila kung ano yung nabivision nila for the company. Kung, syempre, medyo malaki yung company, better siguro kung, halimbawa, yung per department, mag-meeting sila, oh, what is your vision for our company? And then, yung mga managers will meet the executives, tapos they will share, oh, these are some of our employees' vision for our company. And, we will see, di ba, how it will parang mag- ano siya, mag-jive lahat ng na-vision nila for the company. Why not, di ba? So, yun. So, kapag ka na-realize nila na, ah, this is uh, yung gusto nilang mangyari for the company, that is what I want to happen also. I will, uh, I will do my best to do the job that is assigned to me. So, yun. So, that's building shared vision. That is the discipline of building shared vision. Next. And number four ay team learning. Okay, so yun, so the discipline of team learning. The intelligence of the team exceeds the intelligence of the individuals in the team. So, kalimutan ko yung quote na, if you want to go, I forgot. So, inalagay ko na lang pagka na, ano ka, kapag ka na, um, naalala ko ulit. Pero yun, parang if you want to go uh, ahead, um, pwede kang mag-isa ka lang. Pero if you want to go faster, and you realize your purpose, you you go with with the team. So, yun. So, and, um, yes, that is true. Diba? So, um, uh, team learning 
I um naturo ko na din ito na it is really vital to sa total quality, 'di ba? Na minsan ang ang inareward natin ay individuals in the team or yung individual people. Ay, kasi magaling siya. So you will um you will give incentives. Pero ang mangyayari kasi doon is uh, possible na um possible na magkaroon ng competition. So, parang magka-create ka ng culture ng competition na minsan unhealthy na. So, yun. So, why not um, gawin mo siya na by team. So, by team yung incentives mo, di ba? So, there are some companies who do that. Tapos, um, uh, halimbawa, uh, may, ano sila, may reward sila. So, may incentives. So, I will give 10,000 for this department or team. Tapos, kakain na sila sa labas. So, yun. So, yung team leader na yung bahala. And, nagiging bonding din nila kesa sa isa lang siya mapupunta. So, yun, so that's a good idea also. So, that's team learning. So, it starts with a dialogue. Ayan. And it should be free-flowing. So, um, parang nagbe-brainstorm kayo on what you are um, going to learn or nagbe-brainstorm kayo on what you are going to, what you want to attain as a group rather than what you want to attain as um, individual. So, it is vital because teams, not individuals, are the fundamental learning unit in modern organizations. So, hindi na lang ito individual employees, pero ang makakatulong sa isang organization para mas lumago are teams. Okay? So, yun. So, these are the parang ito yung pinaka learning unit, pinakamaliit na unit, hindi na individual, but the team. Okay, so you have to remember that. Unless the team can learn, the organizations cannot learn. Kung hindi natututo ang team, hindi matututo ang buong organization. So you have to remember the discipline of team learning. So now, let's proceed to the fifth discipline. Alright? So, we have our first discipline was personal mastery. Second discipline is about the mental models. Third discipline is about um, uh, building shared vision. Fourth discipline is about um, uh, team learning. And the fifth one, okay, this must be developed as a group. And it is very challenging to apply simultaneously kesa i-apply uh, separately. Okay, and the fifth discipline is... Dun 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 dun. <laughs> the fifth discipline is systems thinking. Okay, ma'am, uh, let's define again what systems thinking is. So, um, here in systems thinking, we understand the system by contemplating the whole and not the individual pattern. So, again, sabi ko nga sa inyo, before you um, question the individuals involved in that particular system, ang questionin mo, ano ba yung sistema? Kasi kapag ka may maling nangyayari, may mali sa sistema. Alright? O baka naman, it could be possible also na tama naman yung sistema, mali yung mga tao. Pero yun, mostly, ng mga nangyayari, before we um, we complain or before we blame those people, ang i-blame mo muna or ang tingnan mo muna ay ang sistema. We understand the purpose of the system by looking at it as a whole. Tingnan mo yung isang sistema as a whole, kung paano yung mga individual purposes ng mga elements if you can still remember the uh, elements of a system paano sila interrelated yung purpose nila with each other so yon so yeah so system thinking is a discipline that combines other disciplines and keeps them from being separated so ang system thinking so if we will um go back to personal mastery um mental models building shared vision and team learning so it parang si system thinking siya yung fifth discipline kasi without system thinking um walang interrelation among those four na nao nang i-discuss natin kanina so that's the um, uh, that's the importance of systems thinking. For example, we will build shared vision. You build vision, uh, a vision without systems thinking, without thinking of the system. Pwede mo makita yung future, pero hindi mo gets yung mga bagay na dapat mong i-master, the personal mastery, at dapat na matutunan nyo as a team, kung walang systems thinking. So, you really have to have, or think among this, or th think um about the systems that you have. 
Okay? So, yun. So, it also needs the disciplines of, yes, you need the four na mga naunang discipline, which is the shared vision, uh, mental models, team learning, and personal mastery para ma-realize mo yung potential ng systems thinking. So, yun. So, um, uh, when we say uh, building shared vision, diba, it is um, committing in a long term, diba, kasi that's a long term vision of the company. Yung mental models naman, you will, you will focus on the openness needed para ma-discover mo na ma-discover mo on how you will see the challenges or the problems in the real world. Team learning, syempre, ma-develop nyo yung skills as a group of people. Personal mastery, magkakaroon kayo ng personal motivation na um, magpatuloy okay, on how yung mga uh, actions nyo, ma-realize nyo that how your actions can affect your world. It is related to your mental models. So, yun. So, they are all related. So, without personal mastery, yung mga tao will just be uh, trapped with a reactive mindset. So, paulit-ulit ko na itong sinasabi. Reactive mindset is you will just look for um, short-term na solution for that particular problem. And one reactive mindset also is you will look for some one or something to blame, di ba? Rather than um, uh, thinking na kung saan ang galing yung problema na yun. And para ang end point is, ang problema pala ay nasa sistema. So, yun. So, that's the, um, that's a discipline, that's, those are the five disciplines. And whereas, systems thinking, it can make us understand the new, um, new way on how individuals perceive themselves and perceives the world. And, when we want to apply the, um, uh, when we want to apply systems thinking with uh, those five disciplines, it involves a shift of mind. Okay, it involves a shift of mind or paradigm shift, if you are familiar with that. So, um, you, from seeing yourself, yourself as separate from the world to seeing yourself as connected to this world, from seeing your problem as someone caused by something or someone also ah kaya kasi ko mahirap kasi ganito ganyan ganyan ah kasalanan kasi ng ganyan okay at um parang when you think or when you learn about systems thinking you will see that whatever is happening or ano yung mga problema na nag arise is um kumbaga yung system will create its own problem so the problem that we are experiencing is be, um uh is not because of an individual or not because of ano pa man but because of the system that is present in that um particular um uh, in that kung ano yung system na present with, with that so yun so and the heart of the learning organization is a shift of mind or ang metanoia so, if you know metanoia, ibig sabihin, change of mind. So, yun. So, um, uh, if you want your organization to be a learning organization, parang you you should uh, unlearn all the things na pag-aralan nyo at mag-aral kayo ulit. So, yun. So, that's the learning organization. You are continuously learning. It is not just taking information. You will read, ah, a learning organization daw. Sabi ni Ma'am, o oh, sige, bigyan natin sila ng different trainings. Bigyan natin sila ng different um, mga books na, that they are to read. Okay? It is not just taking information. Ang learning is not just taking information, but it involves a shift of mind. If there is something na on your mind na nabago, ibig sabihin nyo learned. Okay, so yun, so that's metanoia. So, a learning organization also, last na ito, is a place where people are continually discovering how they create their reality and how they can change it. So, that's the learning organization. So, you, yung mga tao within your organization are so um, uh, eager na ma-discover kung ano yung uh, kung ano yung system na present within the reality at kung paano nyo pwedeng mabago yun. Yeah, kung paano mo pwedeng baguhin yung system. I remember, ayan, I remember in one of Vico Soto's interview nung kakaupo niya pa lang sa pwesto. Tapos, ang sabi niya is, um, uh, may nagtanong sa kanya, what are your, um, 
advices to those young people, di ba, nakatulad niya ako, personally, ayokong mag-involve sa politics. Ayokong tumakbo. Kasi I know the system. Di ba? So, yung tos ang sabi niya is, sabi niya, do not be, uh, this is not verbatim. Sorry, hindi ko na matandaan yung saktong mga sinabi niya. Pero that, that, this is how I get it. He said na, um, do not be afraid na mag-enter uh, sa politics. Lalo kung nasa heart mo talaga, pero napipigilan ka dahil alam mo yung sistema. Okay, sabi niya, just because of the system. Sabi niya, huwag kang magpapapigil just because of the system. Sabi niya, we are here. Kumbaga, parang he believes that the young people or our generation can create something new or can innovate the existing system that we have. Especially in the politics. So, um, uh, that is, so, nag-strike lang siya on my mind kasi it um it created metanoia in me so it changed my mindset about politics so that um uh that our country is still um uh, our country can still be um can still progress that our country can still have a hope why because there are really some people that re um that is willing to learn and they are willing to understand the system that is present at kung paano nila pwedeng mabago yung sistema na iyon. So, yun. So, we're done with our discussion about the learning organization. If you have your questions, ayan, write it down on the comment section. And thank you for listening. Don't forget, ayan, dahil first time ko lang na lumabas sa aking lessons, um, sa aking lessons, and I want it to become a podcast type. So, yun. So, I hope you enjoyed it. Don't forget to like. Please like this video. Subscribe. You can also put your comments on the comment section, whatever it is. Ayan. And share this video on your friends and classmates. So, by the way, we are um road to 1,000 subscribers. So, please, ayan, I would ask you to um uh, to share this with your friends at click subscribe and so that we can reach more people at maturuan din sila thank you so much and see you on my next video